Okay, you guys have seen this before, so this is just uh, dry tumbling to get off all of the uh, homemade lube from the full length resizing. And I uh, put this in the corn cob media more for polishing slash uh, um, light tumbling as opposed to the uh, the other Lyman media, the heavy cleaning media. So I'll uh, pull these out and get them ready for the next phase. Hey folks, Reloading Bench back with you once again. So from our last session, we had our full length resizing with my imitation Dylan Case Lube, my lanolin and uh, isopropyl alcohol, my one to four mix. And now that these are all clean and dry, we're ready to trim. And what I would normally do, or what I have done in the past, is I would take a case gauge and I would run everything through to make sure one the fit is there and then two to see if there's any trimming necessary so in this particular case you can see no trimming would be necessary but that can be time consuming so over the years I've moved away from that um, maybe a go no go in terms of the uh, case dropping completely and smoothly but now what I've done is uh, and I'll, I'll show in other videos different trimming options but I'm a fan of WFT world's finest trimmer by Little Crow Gunworks and essentially what you're doing is you're chucking this into the drill very comparable to how I started years ago with chucking the Lee trimmer and bit into a drill and once it's chucked in um, and it's all set up you're essentially just hitting go on the drill and that chops that little bit off and we're good to go so what I've done to make this a little less messy is I took a medicine pill capsule container the hole and then I lock my little crow or my WFT trimmer in there so essentially when the drill is whipping around and all of these shavings are popping out it's not like they fly everywhere but uh, this just makes it a little easier so it keeps it self-contained so that when I chuck it into the drill it's not quite so messy and doing this in front of the camera while trying not to hit the tripod will be my challenge so this will look a little wobbly but if you see the WFT we're good to go so and I'll only do a couple Let's see if I can get it in front of the camera essentially I'll take a piece of brass I'll put it in and I can already feel a little bit of a grip against the blade knowing okay this is a piece I have to trim so I'll get a rhythm going and I'll pop a piece in and if I don't feel any resistance immediately it doesn't need to be trimmed and I throw it into the finish bucket so I'll do a few of those and we'll see how things sound and look. On pieces like that last one where it felt extra gritty, I'll spend a little bit more time. But if there's a piece like this one right now that doesn't feel like it's even touching the blades, it's just a really quick double check. Same thing there. So essentially time that I would have spent, this is a gritty one, time that I would have spent checking which needs to be trimmed or which doesn't against the case gauge, um, I'm essentially spending that time or less 
actually cutting it or going through the motions of cutting or checking with the settings on the WFT. So I think it's a savings. <laughs> So that's enough for an example. And then what I'll do now is I'll empty my WFT of the shavings. And as you can see, from just what do we have in here? Those few that some needed it, some didn't. There's the shavings. So I'll go ahead and finish this rest of the bucket off and be back with the okay, next Okay, so item. we're all done trimming these. It's about 75 pieces of brass. Only took a few minutes. And this is about what we've got for brass shavings. So normally what I would have done, or what I used to do a long, long time ago, is I would pop this out. WFT, I would change this into a smaller pill capsule and then I would replace the WFT in the drill with the chamfer and deburr tools and I would then uh, lock those in and do my cutting. So essentially I'm touching this brass in, the, in these processes or I would have been three times. Once for the WFT to trim wants to do them all in the chamfer and deburr. So the uh, the time when you have, you know, 10 pieces of brass, 50 pieces of brass, 75, not too bad, but you're tripling all of your activities and the number of times you're touching your brass. So I look for creative ways of saving that time and I'll show you what I came up with uh, in the next segment when I set up for it. So see you in a few minutes. Okay, before I actually set this up, uh, I want to walk through what I'm going to try to do. Um, years ago, Lee came out with the quick trim. And essentially, the idea behind the quick trim was to trim uh, chamfer and deburr all in one motion on the press. And the idea behind that was to insert the brass, obviously the press shell holder down here, insert that, the trim adapter in here, and you would rotate manually. That gets old real quick. So um, I tried it, I nixed it, but about a period of time, I wanna say maybe a year, Lee came out with um, a drill bit adapter for that cutter. So you can drop the cutter in the particular shell holder uh, excuse me, uh, case holder, and I have a little rechargeable. Uh, I found drill was too high on the RPM even when you stepped it down, but uh, you know, a $10 Harbor Freight kind of or Walmart cordless screwdriver was just the right amount of torque, not too much, not too little, which you'll see in the video. Uh, this little plastic shavings piece cheesy it works comes off a lot and then obviously you're using your standard um, whatever brand mine happen to be Lee shell holder so I'll set this up on the press and uh, let you see it in action all right doing a little freestyle off tripod so you can get a better idea of what things look like so this is my cheapy cordless mounted into the cutter and you can see it has some spring to it and we have down here the shell holder for 223 and essentially what will happen is that will go up into here cut and you'll see the difference in fact uh, you get a really nice uh, cut on this so you're essentially doing two steps saving about a third of the brass handling and of course there's my bins so let me put this back on the tripod so you can see the cutting 
in action. All right, so this will be slightly awkward just because of where the tripod is positioned in front of what I'm actually trying to do here. But uh, brass case in. I usually start the trimmer and then bring the ram up to a spinning blade for the trimmer. Couple seconds and I'll do a better before and after, but as you can see, yeah, let's see if I can. That does a really nice job of your inside outside cut, your chamfer and deburr. For something that only takes a couple seconds and you're only handling the brass once. So let me do a before and after so you can really see the difference of there is nothing on that particular piece of brass in terms of a cut and so that you can see that that's the piece I'm focus baby here we go just don't want to focus today. That's, there we go. Does a nice job. So let's see if I can do a couple more while. So I'm having to go around the camera. Is it a perfect solution? Probably not. Does it save me some time and effort? Ultimately, yes, it does. And to me, it was worth the cost trade-off. So that is how I do my brass prep for uh, 223. And those rounds, or rather those casings, are ready to turn into rounds. So. That's it for now. I'll stitch all this together and uh, get it up online posted. Take care. Talk to you soon.